Hello, Sublation viewers. It's me, the Reverend Doctor here, to present you with a little problem to solve. A problem of ridiculous simplicity, yet one that will leave you baffled. Why am I showing you this? Well, it's to emphasize the reality of your cognitive bias and deep-seated inability to recognize your own ignorance. It's a problem called the Monty Hall problem. I'm going to show it to you, and I'm going to ask you to solve it. And you'll think you've solved it. You'll be certain you've solved it. And you'll be wrong. Next, I'm going to explain to you the simple solution. But you won't understand it. Finally, I'm going to walk you through a computer simulation, a Monte Carlo of a Monte Hall, if you will, in order to give you a concrete example of the solution. And then we'll end this session. And maybe you'll go home with just a little more humility, a little less hubris, and with that smirk smacked right off your face. Here it is. The problem gets its name from an old TV game show called Let's Make a Deal, hosted by Monty Hall. Now, here's the problem. I'm going to show you three doors. Behind two of the doors is a zonk. What's a zonk, you ask? A zonk is something you do not want. Behind the remaining door is a new car. If you pick the door with the car, you win the car. Now, Monty asks you to choose one of the doors. You make your choice. But before he opens the door you chose, he opens one of the remaining two doors to reveal a zonk. Remember that a zonk is behind two of the three doors. Therefore, there is at least one zonk behind one of the two doors you didn't choose. So Monty shows you one of the doors holding a zonk. After Monty reveals the unchosen door with a zonk, he asks you if you would like to keep your original door choice or change to the other unopened door. So, you can either keep your original choice or you can switch and choose the other door you originally did not choose and that Monty has not yet opened. So, what do you do? Do you keep your original choice? Or do you change and switch to the other unopened door? Well, this seems simple, doesn't it? If you switch or keep the original door, you have a 50-50 chance of winning, right? Doesn't matter, right? We've got two doors, right? A zonk could be behind either one. The car could be behind either one, and there's a 50-50 chance. Either door could have the car or the zonk. So it doesn't matter, right? Wrong. This is a very simple problem in probability. Very simple. Your cognitive bias is so strong that you want to view the second choice, the choice between keeping your original door or switching to the other unopened door as an independent event. In other words, you want to view that as being independent of the original event, which was presentation of the three doors. But in fact, it's not an independent event. It's dependent on the original event. Doesn't make sense, does it? Let me explain it. So originally, we've got three doors. You chose one. Therefore, there's a one in three chance that the door you chose has the car. There's a two in three chance that the car's behind one of the remaining two doors, right? That's simple. If Monty opens one of the two doors that you didn't choose and shows you a zonk, there's still a two-thirds chance that the car's behind one of those two doors. 
now that Monty has shown you the door with a zonk, there's still a two-thirds chance the car is behind the other unopened door. So the best strategy is to switch and choose the other unopened door. You have a one-third chance of getting the car with your original choice, a two-thirds chance of getting the car if you switch. Pretty simple, right? You probably still do not understand. And that's the thing I want you to consider. This is a really simple problem in probability. Super simple. Yet it's so counterintuitive and contrary to the way that most people think that the simple solution is nearly impossible to see. I'm going to walk you through a Monte Carlo simulation of this problem. Now, this was written in SQL, and a copy of this script is in the description of this video if you want it. Now, don't worry about the syntax of the language here. This is not a computer science lesson, and I'm going to walk through and explain it conceptually so you can understand what's happening. All right. Now, what we're looking at here is the number of rounds or runs that we're going to implement. So what's going to happen is we're going to run 1 million rounds where we choose or keep rather the original door that we chose. And we're going to run another million rounds where we switch doors. We're going to store the results from each of those 2 million rounds in a data table. And then after we've run the 2 million rounds, we're going to sum up the data and see what happened. Across the total of 2 million rounds, we would expect for the 1 million in which we stuck with our original door choice to result in winning the car one third of the time. We'd expect to win the car two thirds of the rounds in which we chose the second unopened door. So, after we record the data in this data table, we're going to start a looping structure, an iterative structure, a while loop, in which we loop through, total it two million times, and we simulate the assignment of zonks and a car to the three doors. We choose one of the three doors, either by making one choice and sticking with it after Monty shows us the door with the zonk, or if it's a round where we're going to switch the strategy, we choose the other unopened door. And that's it. That happens a total of two million times. So we can run this and look at the results. So finally, the results are summarized and displayed here. As you can see, we ran a million rounds for each door choice strategy, and the results are exactly as predicted. One third of the rounds won a car when the strategy was to stick with the original door choice. Two thirds of the rounds won a car when the strategy was to switch to the other unopened door. So that's it. A quick lesson in intellectual humility, maybe, or at least in Monte Carlo simulations. Like and subscribe.